going to be rebuilding Manchester City from FIFA 15 all the way to FC 25. This club that has just absolutely dominated English football in the last 10 years. They've won six of the last 10 Premier League titles. However, recently, they have definitely been struggling a little bit. Never in my life did I think I would ever hear rumors of Pep Guardiola possibly getting sacked. But you know the drill, people. We're going to sign and sell players in FIFA 15, take the exact same team with us over to FIFA 16, and we're going to try to go better than the real-life Manchester City. So be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and without further ado, let us begin. This is the starting 11 that we're working with, and it is obviously a pretty damn good-looking team, but we are still a side with so much cash I want to really improve the starting 11 now. Poor, oh, have a look at that. 66 million pounds only in FIFA 15. <laughs> yeah, boy. In these rebuilds, I do love going for some younger players that turn out to be pretty solid with the power of hindsight. <gasps> but in this rebuild, I might be a little different. I might just look at whatever plays we need, specifically seeing that starting 11. I think we could go with a new left back and maybe a new center back. This time, I'm just going to go for the best players in each position. So, at centre-back, why not make a move for Jerome Boateng from Bayern Munich? Between 42 and 52 million, I might maybe trade Demi Kalis as part of the deal. Let's go with maybe 45 million. Will they take that? They will take it. Eventually, we had to bump it up to 50. We're getting so many offers right now for our strikers, especially Ed Dzeko. But we've also gotten an offer from Tottenham for Stefan Jovetic. I can probably sell him. Might try to squeeze a few cheeky more million out of Tottenham if possible. But Boateng has accepted his contract and will be joining Man City. A centre-back partnership of company and Boateng. That is outrageously good. Looks like we also completed the sale of Stefan Jovetic, so there's a little more cash in there. In fact, the budget's just a touch under 30 million. What can we do with that? Maybe instead of replacing Gail Clichy at left back, I might go for a new CDM alongside Yaya Torre. And I do have one player in mind. That is Sergio Busquets. 25 years of age, 85 rated. Can we pluck him out of Barcelona and change history? Between 26 and 34 million, we have that. We should be able to get him. Especially if we include, oh, I don't know, let's say Wilfred Bonny. I don't imagine he's going to be starting many games. But Barcelona's accepted the deal. Busquets has accepted his contract. And we complete another huge signing here at Manchester City. We added Boateng to the centre-back partnership. And now Yaya Toure is lining up alongside Sergio. Busquets. Oh my god, this team is insane. You know, looking at the rest of the team, you've got interesting names like Frank Lampard is still here. This was, of course, that season where he came over. And in the reserves even, shout out bloody Mika Richards, you know, back when he wasn't a football pundit, but an actual footballer. Angelino is our lowest rated player, but even he's going to get up to a good overall, so there are players worth keeping an eye out for in the reserves here. But let's get underway and simulate the first season with Manchester City. Can you believe this season in real life they did not win a single thing a very rare thing in the next 10 years for man city to go trophyless but can we get the first trophy of our rebuild right here in this season well before we take a look at the league table i will say this capital one cup we did not win unfortunately but the fa cup we have made the final of so we do have a chance here against Chelsea to win our first trophy of the rebuild to get the ball rolling. Despite being so dominant in England, it's kind of hard to believe that Manchester City have only won two of the last 10 FA Cups. So we have a chance to win one straight away here. We've already added two world-class players to this team, which was world-class enough already. And oh, I can't forget Frank Lampard's on the bench. Imagine we bring him off the bench and he scores a winner in the FA Cup final against Chelsea. Whoa. Oh my god, what the hell's happened there? I kind of took my eye off nope. of it. Curler, saved by Petacek already. Oh, it's opening up the middle. Hello, Torre. Chance, goal! Oh, brilliant start. This right here is peak, prime Yaya Torre. And he's doing business again, scoring at Wembley like he has done in real life. Oh, that's a disgusting challenge. Please send him off. Who is that? Demba Bar. It is only a yellow card. Oh, no, it's not. It's Christian Benteke. Ooh, actually. Ooh, okay. Quadrado, the ball in. The clearance away. Under the pump. Can we send him off, please? He's an absolute disgrace. B 
Benteke, you thug. What is going on here? Finally, he sent off double yellow card. Get him off the field. Chelsea down to 10 men. We got the 1-0 lead. It's looking good. But all right then, half time. Can't believe I, 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 you very rarely see a striker get sent off. That's all I'm saying. That's poor from Benteke. But we'll go into the second half with a man advantage. Do you know what else? I'm doing it. David Silva's coming off. I'm bringing on Frank Lampard against his old side, Chelsea. Oh, please, can we get this man a goal? Dangerous ball in. Oh, my God. What is that attempt at the clearance at that back post? It's 1-1. One, one, and Juan Cuadrado has leveled it up for a 10-man side Chelsea. I can't believe it. we got to find the lead back again now. Unreal. Nasri, ball in. Dangerous. Oh, it's a header. And don't tell me. Oh, it's Lampard. From the cross from Sammy Nasri. Frank Lampard scores against Chelsea in an FA Cup final. Oh, man, that is cursed. Wow. No holding back on the celebration either. You love to see it. Oh, one back in a great spot. Hello, Aguero. He's away. Sergio Aguero surely has finished it. That has got to be the FA Cup sealed now. Yeah, we've done it, people. We get the job done in the FA Cup. 3-1 against Chelsea. And we are kicking off this rebuild with silverware. That's what I'm talking about. Captain Vincent Company lifts up the first trophy, the rebuild. The real-life Manchester City has won 14 trophies in the last, you know, 10 years. What are we going to do? Can we get more than that? Now, unfortunately, the rest of the season was an absolute stinker. We came in sixth place and only managed to come like what only 16 wins we got 15 draws we let everton finish above us man not a lot not only spurs everton we are out of the champions league since we're not in the final so that is it then we are going to be in the europa league in our second season when I thought we had a good start at the rebuild, maybe not. How does that team come sick? You please tell me. I don't believe it. Whatever. We will continue to make improvements to the starting 11, to the reserves over the course of the next few seasons. And I'm sure we will get that first Premier League title. Here are your substitutes. Here are your reserves. And now let's take that exact same team over with us to FIFA 16. Now, this season, uh, Man City sold on a fair few players like Ed Dzeko, Mika Richards, and also James Milner. But as you can see, they're not going anywhere. They're staying at Man City. We're keeping them here. They also, in real life, signed players like Fabian Delph, Patrick Roberts, names that I'm probably not going to go for. But I am going to recreate their signings of Raheem Sterling and also Nicholas Otamendi. So Sterling goes in at left back, and because of the signing of Boateng last season, Nicholas Otamendi has to stay on the bench for now. Now, looking at that starting 11 this season, I feel like the most... Uh, area that needs improvement would probably be the left back or maybe one of their winger positions like another right winger maybe we have another pretty hefty budget of 72 million what can we do with that also very quickly by the way shout out to jason denier and also kalechi ianacho who have come up from the youth academy so a few new additions in there but this is what i'm thinking we do with that budget we're going for a left back possibly Jordi alba Possibly Jose Gaia as maybe an option. But as for the wingers, we're going big. We're either going for Neymar from Barcelona. We're going to gut Barcelona and try to take Neymar off them as well. Or maybe we keep things a bit more local and go for Alexis Sanchez. I think there is definitely a more smarter option to go for, but he will be a lot more expensive. So it depends on how much we have to spend. I've got a couple of plays maybe I can transfer list to sell for more cash, but there's not a lot of players I really want to let go of. I'm just going to put down some transfer offers and we're going to see what happens. Lads, I've been going back and forth. It looks like Neymar is going to be very unlikely. 97 million pounds. We do not have that, even close to it. But I do have Jose Gaia that has accepted his contract for about 20 million. And Alexis Sanchez has accepted the contract as well. He would cost us 55 million. We just have enough cash to make that happen. So welcome Jose Gaia, welcome Alexis Sanchez. We have a brand new left-hand side really now with Alexis Sanchez and Jose Gaia in this Man City team. 
Raheem Sterling just moved to the right for now. And hell yeah, that team continues to get better and better. Now, can we hopefully finish at the very least in the top four this time of the Premier League? We did get our trophy last season, but hopefully we can have a much better season. Of course, you can't forget the fact that we're in the Europa League. So we might maybe hopefully be a shot of winning that as well. We have again fallen short in the Premier League, but we are not going to finish outside the top four this time. Yay. But third, six points away from the would-be champions, Chelsea. Once again, Carabao Cup, we did not make the final. However, we did make the FA Cup final and we won it. We beat Brighton. So we're two FA Cups in a row, but we're not going to do anything in the Europa League, even though I would have thought we'd be pretty heavily favoured to. So this team right now, yeah, it's had some injuries to Aguero, Busquets, that won't help. But right now, all we can seem to win is the FA Cup. I don't know why. Anyway, on to FIFA 17. Now this season in FIFA 17, they brought in a lot of players and I'm pretty much going to recreate almost all of them. Ilkay Gundogan, they brought in. John Stones, they brought in as well. They also brought two players in from the German League, Leroy Sane from Schalke and finally Kevin De Bruyne. Oh my goodness, Kevin De Bruyne is here, which means David Silva moved to more left center midfield, Sergio Busquets on the right. What a midfield, what a team, and we've just gone and made it even crazier. Zinchenko also, by the way, does come up from the Youth Academy too, as well as Tosin Adarabaya. I mean, we'll see if he gets good enough to get into the team. Probably not. But man, what a side. That surely has to be a team that can challenge for the Premier League. I also noticed, by the way, we have a goalkeeper currently on loan away that was brought in this season, Geronimo Ruli. I wouldn't mind getting him as a backup keeper, so I'm going to recall him from loan very quickly. He actually is good enough to be our backup goalkeeper, 82, compared to Joe Hart's 84. They might almost be competing for who starts. A lot of new faces, a very different looking team. It's taken a another step up. We're not going to wait around. We're just going to get into simming the season. Believe it or not, again in real life, Man City went trophyless this season. The first time, I think, or the last time that it probably ever happens. What are we going to do though? Well, taking a look at the Premier League table, we are absolutely miles ahead with two games to go. We cannot be caught. We're Premier League champions for the first time in this rebuild. We do finally, at long last, add our first Premier League title to our trophy cabinet in this rebuild. They've won six of the last 10. We finally get our first here in FIFA 17. We can still try to break Man City's real life record, but uh, it will be tricky. We're going to have to win almost every single Premier League title for the rest of this rebuild in order to do it, but we'll see. We're going to finish with a seven-point lead in the Premier League, so lovely. Finally, we get that one. No Carabao Cup, sadly, and unfortunately, also no FA nope. Cup either. We were also so close to getting to that Champions League final, but Real Madrid knocked us out in the semis. That's the closest we've been so far. We are yet to have a trophyless season, I mean, but we're just getting one trophy a season. I would like to stack on a little bit more than this. We're going to be losing Frank Lampard and a couple other players to retirement next season as well, so we might need to start adding some young players as well. We'll look into that. Let's go to FIFA 18. Now this season, people, we saw quite a fair few again transfers into Manchester City. Shocker. A new goalkeeper in the name of Edison came through. We have Kyle Walker that have joined as well and Bernardo Silva. We're signing Edison, that's for damn sure. He becomes our equal highest rated goalkeeper and we know he'll become our highest rated keeper. But Kyle Walker, yeah, he becomes our highest rated right back and Bernardo Silva is our highest rated right midfielder. It's a no-brainer. Another player they signed that I'm also going to recreate is actually Douglas Luiz. Only 73 rate but I think he's got a bit of a bit of a future behind him, so we'll get him in. And two other players that came up from the Youth Academy, Birahim Diaz, 66, and a certain Phil Foden, 65 overall. Wow, I reckon that man's about to explode in overall as well. What a starting 11 we have now. Now, interestingly enough, left back, we've had Gail Clichy and a couple other players like really drop off a bit. Sagni is retired. So we've got James Milner at left back. I don't know if I want that to be the case. I would have been interested in maybe going for Andy Robertson, but he is only just 
joined Liverpool, so we can't get him in this window. So maybe I will go for Jordi Alba in that case. We'll see if we can pay most likely a pretty big transfer fee to get him off of Barcelona, but we have the cash. So when he comes in, he will be joining Manchester City. Lovely. Get James Milner out of left back immediately. For the love of God, Jordi Alba is in then. He's got Sanchez up ahead of him. We got De Bruyne, Silva, Busquets, Aguero. What a team, man. This is unbelievable. Nice. We added Phil Foden and a bunch of other good young players in too. Seriously. This team, I'm hoping, is going to start to really dominate soon. Enough of this one trophy a season, Malaki. I want to go off. I want to treble. Let's go big. Come on, FIFA 18. Oh, my God. Unfortunately, we come a little short in the Premier League. We come second this time around to Manchester United. We're going back and forth with this damn club. The Carabao Cup was also won by Manchester United. And the FA Cup, we couldn't make the final of. It was bizarre. We got knocked down the quarters by Sunderland. And in the damn Champions League, what is going on with us in semi-finals? We got knocked out by Juventus. Here we are, we've got the best team of the rebuild yet, and it's still going trophyless. What is going on, man? I just don't believe how few trophies we've won with a team this good over four seasons. We've not had a great start. We've been like, oh, so close to two Champions League finals. We would just get over that hurdle finally in FIFA 19. A couple of players leaving this season, like Yaya Torre on a free to Olympiacos, as well as Birahim Diaz going to Real Madrid now. Want to hang on to those players. Or should I say, I wanted to hang on to Torre. He's no longer in the game, it looks. But Birahim Diaz, I know he'll get up to a decent rating. And in terms of names that they brought in, uh, honestly, the only real big name was probably Riyad Mahrez. And I mean, yeah, of course we can bring in Riyad Mahrez. But I mean, you know, he's not really no. getting into this starting 11. Bloody Bernardo Silva would probably start ahead of him. And I mean, just... It's a ridiculous midfield that we've got now. Look, apart from Busquets, it's almost all 90 races, but Sane, Aguero, and Sterling. So a very familiar front three with all said and done. We're getting to a point now where we got a lot of like quality players that can't even get on the bench. Boateng, John Stones for crying out loud as well. Even an 84 rated Gundogan in midfield can't even get on the bench. Now we've got some uh, older options in this team that I think I might want to freshen up and I might maybe go for 17 year old William Saliba to possibly, oh, I don't know, maybe swap out an older player. And then there's another 17 year old that I've come across by the name of Erling Brout Haaland. Why not get in the number nine of Man City today but way earlier and for way less cash. So we have gone ahead and added those two into the team. Haaland's in, Saliba is in. But I also have another option I've just thought of only this moment, and that is Jaden Sancho. Who can forget that this man actually came from Manchester City's Youth Academy, but never ended up playing for the team. Ended up going to Dortmund, ended up eventually ending up at United. Hell no, let's let's not let that happen. I want to bring in Jaden Sancho. Could I possibly whack, I don't know, Sammy Nasri in as part of the deal? Still got him. Yes, but they want 30 mil on top. Wow, that's a bit more than I thought. Can we just bump that on down to 25 maybe? Yes, we can. All right, Sancho's coming home as well. Don't know if he's going to threaten to get into this starting 11. He might maybe with Sterling and Sane, possibly in Mares, but either way, we've got him in as well. Securing our future. Now, this season, Manchester City won every single trophy possible in England, ended up becoming the what? The formidables. And I wonder, will we be able to do something similar this season? We have not had the greatest goal of it with trophies. Can that change here? Well, we do get another Premier League title, so that is a good start to this season. Finally, let's see if we can win a little more than just this one thing. We can't nope. win the Carabao Cup, so we're not doing the treble in England, that's for sure. What about in the FA Cup? We lost the final to Scunthorpe United on penalties. What is that result? Are you for real? How did Scunthorpe United make it all the way to the final and beat us in the... Pe oh my, I can't believe it. In the shootout. Wow. That is... One of the most wild simulation results I have ever seen. That you're fine. And you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. We don't even make a Champions nope. League final, so we're still only winning one trophy a season. 
What is going on with us? What is it with Man City and losing shock upset finals in the FA Cup? I can't believe that. First wing and now Scunthorpe. That's even worse. We have two Premier League titles. We have an FA Cup, but we are missing the three Carabao Cups that Man City had won in this period so far. So we're three trophies behind the real Man City. What is happening? Over we go to FIFA 20. This season, they ended up losing their captain, Vincent Company. He ended up going off to Anderlecht. And honestly, so too did Douglas Louise off to Aston Villa for not an awful lot of money at the time. I still think I want to hang on to him. I'm also going to repeat the transfers of Zhao Cancelo in this season, along with Rodri. Yeah, a certain Ballon d'Or winner. He comes in at an 85 overall, still not good enough to displace Sergio Busquets, who we brought in a time ago and has just been a lock in our midfield. Bernardo Silva moves into right wing. Fernandinho is now a centre-back, actually, and he's one of the higher-rated centre-backs we have. Him and Laporte. I don't think that centre-back partnership is going to last all that long. In fact, I reckon it wouldn't hurt to go and try to bring in another actual centre-back of high quality. Why not go for a certain Matt Hummels? We, we have signed a couple of players from Dortmund lately. Let's just keep it going. Ah, the club has recently acquired him. Oh, he must have just come back from Bayern Munich. Well, that's unfortunate timing, but I still don't hate the idea of getting him. I might just go for him next season then. I'm whacking a couple of plays up on the short list, on the transfer list, should I say. James Milner, Joe Hart, can probably let them go, as well as maybe Sanchez and even Zinchenko. That's probably the highest he's going to get to, honestly. I don't know about Real Madrid trying to pay a hundred and something million for Kevin De Bruyne. I want to hang on to him, but we will accept one of the multiple offers for Zinchenko. And with those players going, we've got our budget up to a pretty high 160 million. I'm in the transfer for hub right now i'm seeing a certain player that's being recommended to me by the name of it's killing him, Mbappe, bro. and apparently his value was only 84 million and it's got the the cogs in my head turning yes we did bring in a certain erling brout harlan the two players that we think are going to be the next big rivalry in football after messi ronaldo what if instead of rivals they were teammates I might throw a little Ed and Jekko into the deal to help hopefully make it, you know, soothe it over a bit. And that will help us out a bit, but still it's 150 something million. What if we smooth that down to 135? Yeah, PSG will take it. That's more money than they got for Mbappe in real life anyway. And ladies and gentlemen, just like that, Mbappe and Haaland just became teammates. We're going to play him out on the left-hand side, which apparently is where Mbappe probably prefers to be anyway. Aguero still the striker. Raheem Sterling, 89 at right wing instead. We have got a ridiculously good midfielder. Great looking defense as well. As an 88 rated goalkeeper, how are we not making at least one Champions League final at some point in this rebuild. But he is here in the sky blue, ladies and gentlemen. Mbappe and Erling Haaland in the same team. Haaland is so fresh, he doesn't even have a face in the game yet. Hopefully this link up will be feeding generations. But for now, when are we going to eat? I have still yet to win more than one trophy in a season. Still yet to make a Champions League final. Still yet to win a Carabao Cup even. Come on, boys. Well, what a battle. Finally, we get at least back-to-back -back trophies in the Premier League. So that's nice. We do it by getting 105 points. Look at the gap between third and fourth. That's hilarious. Oh, Carabao Cup. Finally, we tick that off. Finally, we get more than one trophy in a season. And in the FA Cup. Oh my God, we've beaten Arsenal 3-2. Finally, it's happened. Couldn't get any better. Oh my God, it can. It might. It very well could. It's a Champions League final as well. We've waited for so long. And finally, we do a treble in England. Now we might be able to do an actual treble if we take down Liverpool. I don't know what overly massively changed this season that suddenly we are now winning trophies like crazy. This team still looks quite similar to what it was before, although we did just add Mbappe. Maybe that was it. God knows, man. I think maybe it was the addition of Mbappe. Is he that good? I mean, the fella has never won a Champions League in real life. That might change. His first season at Man City, they could win a Champions League together for the first time. Let's do it then, people. I like the team that we have put together. I think it's a team that could be on the verge of making history. Imagine winning it all. Every trophy in England and the Champions League. God knows where this season came from with all the others that came prior to it, but we are off and underway in the final. Oh, it's too heavy of a pass. What is that, Aguero? What's going on here? Shoot! Nope. Oh, off of the post! 
God, that was a tricky move to put together after the turnover, and it just hit the outside of the post. If only it was the other side. Bang. Get him, Stones. Go on. That's a brilliant tackle. Back to the keeper, and that will do it. He's put it in his own net. Are we sure the half is over? All right. Yes, it is. Thank God. We are going into halftime still at nil-nil. Making changes. One Spanish CDM for another. Sergio Busquets out. Rodri in. Rodri with the intercept. Hello. Now look at the right side. Go on. Time this, and we should be surely in. Go on, Aguero get forward. Aguero said he wouldn't leave Man City until they won a Champions League. He didn't fulfill that promise. He might do it now. Big time counter attacking. Mbappe releases Sterling. Sterling squares to Aguero. And we have the lead with 10 minutes to go. Sergio doing the job. Making more changes. Just eating into the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, not long to go. And now Aguero heads it away. And surely that's enough time. Mbappe, no one's even closing him. What's going on? Saved. Oh, wait. It's fine. Don't even give us the corner. It doesn't matter. Look at the time. What are we even stressed for? This is over. It's cleared away. Keepers out. Sterling strike. Oh, fuck it off. Just end it. It's over. Sergio Aguero's goal in the last few 10 minutes or so will win us our Champions League. Finally, the first of the rebuild, the first for Manchester City, and we do it way earlier than the real-life Man City team won it. And very fitting that if you're going to only score one goal for the whole game, that Man City's man to do it would be Sergio Aguero. He is the one that wins us this UCL, but he's the one that'll lift up the trophy. The honors are yours, Kevin De Bruyne. There we go. What a season. We do the treble in England and the treble in Europe as well. Unbelievable. Four trophies in a season. That is what I'm talking about. Wow. And just like that, we go to three Premier League titles, one Carabao Cup, two FA Cups, and now a Champions League one so far. That is not bad. It's about on pace for total trophies, but we have an extra Premier League and a Champions League. We're going very nicely now. More of this, please, as we go to FIFA 21. This season, Man City lost a couple of pretty big names like David Silva to Real Sociedad and Leroy Sane to Bayern Munich. Not keen on letting him go just quite yet. He is still a pretty good overall and still good enough to start. They brought a pretty decent player in by the name of Ferran Torres from, uh, from Valencia, but I don't really think I'll go for him. I will recreate the signings, however, of Nathan Ake from Bournemouth and Ruben Diaz from Benfica. I was so interested in picking up Matt Hummels like, you know, last season that I totally forgot Ruben Diaz is coming in as well. And you know what? He's probably high enough rated to start ahead of Boateng as well. Now, ever since we sold Joe Hart, by the way, last season, Edison and Geronimo Rulli are the only keepers we have. So we do need to get, you know, at least a third choice option. And I've got this one Italian keeper, a bit young, 23, looks to be on the way up. His name's Vicario. We'll see if he becomes anything, but he's just the third choice keeper, really. Oh, and looking at the reserves, I forgot to mention, we've also brought up Cole Palmer from the Youth Academy. So only 59 rated. He is so, so far away from the rest of the team in terms of overall, but he is worth hanging on to purely for his rating in FC 25. And there we go. We've also signed the backup third choice keeper option for now of Vicario as well. Edison should keep him fairly covered. But anyway, another season. Are we going to win four trophies again this season? I mean, I'd be very happy if we could. I'm not sure if we will. Let's find out. Another Premier League title in a row. This is actually starting to get real good now. Bloody hell, another one. We finally started to get the Carabao Cups going as well. And don't tell me FA Cup as well. It's back-to-back -back English trebles, man. That's an incredible effort. From winning like one trophy a season for the last couple to now seven trophies in the last two. Unfortunate that we got no such luck in the Champions League, but look at this team. You can really see some of the players that are dropping off and overall as we go along. Aguero's dropping off. But like, obviously, David Silva's dropping off a bit there too. We'll do something about that. But, oh, this is unreal. Unreal. Can we keep this going? FIFA 22. Now, this season, people, we have indeed lost, unfortunately, Sergio Aguero. He went to Barcelona in real life. But it looks like he's not really even in this build of FIFA anymore. So... Can you believe it? They've already shut down the FIFA 22 servers this early. There was another pretty big addition, like a huge addition to Man City in real life. Would have been playing where Mbappe is, and that man is Jack 
Grealish, who went for an insane amount of money, 117 million euros. Between Mbappe, Haaland, Raheem Sterling, hell, even on the bench, you've got goddamn Riyad Mahrez is higher rated. Leroy Sane is higher rated. Legit, don't think I need to get Jack Grealish in at all. I am not going to make that signing. Hell, bloody Phil Foden's up to an 84 now. He is the same overall as Grealish. Like, it's fine. Bloody Sancho is a better option. Higher rated. We don't need Jack Grealish. Rodri has absolutely got the starting center defensive midfielder spot from now on. And you may see Silva is still at center midfield. However, it ain't David Silva. It's Bernardo Silva. David Silva has been relegated to the bench. And honestly, I think we could sell him on and replace him with someone new and fresh because he's going to be up and retiring soon. So we are going to transfer list David Silva. We're also going to transfer list Otamendi and Fernandinho, 36 years of age. I reckon it's time we just cash in on them, get a bit of in and try to replace them with younger talent. And here are two midfielders I might sign in order to replace those players like McAllister maybe from Brighton and also Chouamani before his move to Real Madrid. So we lose those older players, but we bring in Chouamani, we bring in McAllister, good pickups. Are we able this season to do a treble of English trebles? Can we for the third straight year win every English trophy available? We managed to secure one of honestly our most uh, dominant wins in the Premier League. So another one in a row. How many is that? I believe that's four in a row. You know, we've won the Carabao Cup. Have we done it a second or third time? No, we haven't. It is not an FA Cup, only the Carabao Cup and Prem. Because again, Champions League, we didn't make the final up. We still only have the one Champions League final appearance yet. Even though we're up to 12 trophies now, five Premier League so far. Oh, we're having a good, strong finish. Let's keep it going. FIFA 23. Now, this season was a pretty damn good season for Man City. I mean, on top of winning a treble and their first Champions League title, they also managed to do a couple of other pretty decent things, like bringing in certain players. Erling Haaland being one of them. But of course, we took care of that ages ago, so we don't need to worry about it. They also sold players like Raheem Sterling and Gabriel Jesus, but they still both sort of serve their place in this team still. Phil Foden is currently a right back, but if I really wanted to, I could play Mares, I could play Sterling. I don't know. I'm just going with Foden just to give him a chance because he'll probably be the highest rated in a year or two. Aside from that, the starting 11 is almost exactly the same as it was last season. So what can we do this time around? Or do we need to make any improvements to the starting 11? I don't see it. There was another play that they brought in as well, which was Julian Alvarez. I mean, 79 rates and we'll get him in. I don't expect him to be starting over Mbappe or Haaland. We still have such an insane amount of cash. I mean, we've had insane amounts of cash like every season. I haven't done anything insane with it for a while, maybe. So how about this for crazy? Mohamed Salah. We need a new higher rated right winger. All the wingers we have right now are about the same 84, 85 overall. Let's bang out an 89, maybe 90 rated Mohamed Salah in the future. 122 mils the asking price, mate. Come on. Absolutely nothing for Man City. I could possibly throw Riyad Mahrez in there, plus 80 million, just to smooth things over. And Jurgen is going to accept it. All right. We are taking a star player off of a league rival, and we are bringing in Mohamed Salah. What a huge pickup this is. 89 rated. We might have an all 90 rated front three very soon. Oh, man. Mohamed Salah, Haaland, and Mbappe. Honestly, that... That screams like 150 goals a year. That's unreal. I just wonder what it's possible to win with that front three up top. Well, apparently not the Community Shield. Are you for real? Can we book ourselves a place back into the Champions League? Oh, by a point. One single point. And two points on Liverpool. And two points on Chelsea. God, that was a close race. But we just finish ahead. We go to a fifth straight Premier League title. That's what the real life Man City is chasing. Don't know if they're going to do it though. But we get it done here. Not nope. with a Carabao Cup, sadly. And nope. not with an FA Cup either. Goddamn Champions League didn't make the final of either. Got an El Clasico final there. That would have been nice, but not nice for us. We add Mohamed Salah. We have an all 90 rated front three with Mbappe, Haaland and Salah. And what does it get us? Just the measly Premier League, dude. Only the one trophy. Anyway, time to say goodbye to FIFA as we head over to FC24. This season, uh, Manchester City ended up selling a certain someone to Chelsea for 
And, you know, 47 million, not bad for a guy by the name of Cole Palmer. Oh God, I wonder what he's going to turn into. That 47 million looking like a bargain. Even though at the start of FC24, he had a 66 overall, he finished it with something a little higher than that. And we're definitely going to watch him explode in overall next season. They also let go of a handful of other players we're going to hang on to like Laporte, Mares. Oh no, we already sold Mares. What am I saying? But they did bring in a couple of players as well. One that I'm going to recreate will be that of Gavardiol as well. Again, not that he's really pushing to get into the starting 11. I just signed him because I kind of think I look a little bit like him, apparently. But God damn it, what a starting 11. It's still pretty much exactly the same, apart from John Stones getting up to a decent overall that he can now be in the starting 11. We have only two more chances to win a Champions League in this rebuild. If we only finish with the one... I will be very disappointed because we should be doing better than that. Well, we're going to start off at least with another Premier League title. Six in a row. Unreal with a 99-point season. No Carabao Cup, FA Cup, none going on there either. Ah, drats. Okay, come on. Well, we stack on another Premier League. That's good. That takes us to seven Premier League titles. So we have actually beaten the real-life Man City's record in the Premier League with that. I can't believe it. And we might also get to beat their real-life Champions League record as well. We have got to take on Bayern Munich in the final. With a team that looks like this at the end of the season, I count one, two, three, four, five players six in the 90s plus the goalkeeper kyle walker dropped just dropped off a cliff i don't know what happened to him so maybe at right back we go with jose gaia angelina god who do we go for i think i might do this we'll move cancelo to right back and at left back we will play jose gaia in his place let's get it then people going for a second champions league and it will be of course at wembley stadium Taking on the pretty mighty Bayern Munich. What can we do? They have won a Champions League at Wembley Stadium before. We cannot let them win another. Oh, this will work out. Come on. Come on, De Bruyne. I got Haaland. Haaland's in there. Oh, he's left it. Mbappe, how do you not finish it? I don't think that's how I drew it up, but it was perfect. But Mbappe still fucked it. Salah, get it off. Yes. Come on. Up the middle. Surely this time you can't, Mbappe. You can't stuff it up. Where's Neuer going? We absolutely sent him one way, then the other. Look at this. Great through ball in the end. I think by Bernardo Silva went right. The keeper adjusts his angle to cover the near post. And in the end, oh my God, Neuer, you've completely exposed the far side. He just watches it go in. And Mbappe scores in the final. Six in 12. Not a bad return. Not a bad player. Oh, deflection. Shot. The goalkeeper's gone down. We're not going to be able to clear it in time. We have got one corner to deal with, please. Just get rid of it. Don't allow anything stupid right at the end here. Come on, Mbappe. I'm spamming the B button. It's finally away, and that'll do it. First half is in the books, and thank God for that. We only just hold on to a slender lead. Come on, for a second Champions League in this rebuild. Bernardo Silva out wide. Got Jose Geyer on the run. Got Haaland at the back. It'll get to him. Surely not! Oh, what a goal! A scorpion kick in the final. That is the best Champions League final goal ever. Forget about Zidane. Forget about Bale. Nothing is ever topping that. That is right up into the top corner. Haaland, you absolute machine. Oh, wow. If there's any way to win a Champions League final, if there's any way to seal it, that's how you do it. Oh, 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 I'm talking about sealing it. Edison's keeping us in it. Oh, I missed the slide. Here comes Jao Cancelo. What's he got? What's he got? Still moving, Jao Cancelo. This is a heck of a run. Still moving. De Bruyne. We've got Mbappe. We've got Mbappe! Neuer's having an absolute mare. There's nothing he could do about the second. He should have done better for the third. Could have sworn this was like right up the middle. But no, in the end, he can't do nothing about it, Manuel Neuer. That's right at him. How do you let that in? Only a matter of seconds to go. It's cleared away and it's over. Man City claim a second Champions League in their own country. They get it done at Wembley. What a season. What a rebuild we're having now. Right toward the end, we've really got it going, haven't we? God damn. We've now won more Premier Leagues, more FA Cups, and more Champions League than the real-life Manchester City. We're just two behind them in the Carabao Cups. 
unfortunate. But what a night, what a result, only one more season to go, but we stack on that second Champions League, you beauty. This is our 15th trophy of the rebuild. I wonder how many we can finish with in FC 25. <laughs> And so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in FC 25 with a new look Manchester City team. We have not just one, not just two, not just three, but four players that are 90 rated or higher. Can you believe De Bruyne and Haaland and Rodri are three real life Man City players anyway? We've just only gone and added Mbappe. That's how ridiculous Man City is anyway. But we also went ahead and stacked on Mohamed Salah just for, you know, shits and giggles. We kept Gundogan 87. We have got William Saliba up to an 87 as well. We've added McAllister. We've kept Sane, we've kept, or should I say, brought in Chouamani, kept Cole Palmer, 85 rated, and just created an absolute beast of a team that's gone even better than the real life Man City. We currently have 15 trophies in total, so all that's left to do is to simulate ahead and see what we can finish with in FC 25. Oh, pff, God, what has happened here? At the end of the final, at the end of this rebuild, I can't believe it. We've won so much, we've come fifth. How have we come fifth? I don't believe that. We're actually only like eight points away from winning the league as well, but there's just so many teams that have finished ahead. Oh my God, I can't believe that. Do we win the Carabao Cup? No. Do we win the FA Cup? No. Please tell me we're not going trophyless. In our final season, yeah, we are going trophyless. How does that happen? Unbelievable. This rebuild was so bizarre. We started so slowly, then we started banging out trophies like crazy, and then the fall off right at the end again. What is this? Bloody hell, man, who knows? But hey, in the end, this is what we finish with. Seven Premier League titles, three FA Cups, three Carabao Cups, and two Champions Leagues to take us to 15 trophies, one across the 10 year span. That is not bad. And despite a trophyless final season, I am still taking my haul of trophies over the real life Man City. So we're ticking this off as a success. I hope you've enjoyed, ladies and gentlemen. My name is The Master Bucks. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have enjoyed, be sure to click on this video as well for plenty more.